Uh, this is a little video about how to put together something called a periactoid, uh, which is a particular kind of billboard that's designed to be able to alternate among three different images. So what I've got here is um, a um, rectangular prism uh, duplicated 14 times so that when you select all 14 of them and rotate them in Y, um, you will um, uh, you can you can present a separate image on the face. So when they're all lined up uh, like this, you can project one image on this um, uh, on this uh, group of 14 faces. So they're all independent um, uh, objects. Now, if I were going to really construct a, um, a periactoid um, the way that you would build one in real life, I would need three separate texture maps uh, for each one of these uh, prisms, which would mean I would need um, 42 different textures. So I'm going to shortcut this a little bit and use a projection on this. So I've set this up with uh, three different Lambert materials here, a red, a green, and a blue. And so I've also set this up so that when my prisms are at zero degrees rotation in Y, they're red. And you know, I've, so I've applied the red um, shader to those faces only. Uh, when I rotate this uh, 120 degrees, um, I've assigned the green shader to those faces. And then uh, when it's at 240 degrees, um, I've, uh, I've applied the blue shader. Okay, so this will um, will rotate and will switch from red, you know, red, green, and blue. Okay. So let's go back to zero degrees, and I'll start working with the red material to begin with. And what I want to do is project an image onto um, this red material's color, and it's going to encompass all of these different uh, faces, these fourteen separate faces. So I'll I'll right click on the file. I'll create this as a projection, which gives me these nodes right here. Um, I'll map this directly to the red color there and then my file texture I've gone ahead and loaded up three different images in my source images directory so we'll put the seal um, on the faces that now have the red shader. Uh, so if I go ahead and render this you can see that my, my seal image is repeated um, a bunch of times so what we need to do is stretch this uh, 3D texture uh, so that it just covers the um, uh, covers the you know what we want it to cover. So I'll take the, the placement node here, I'll scale it, and uh, I didn't really uh, pay too much attention to the aspect ratio of the um, of this model, uh, so it may stretch a little bit or it might squash a little bit, um, but I just you know at this point I just want to demonstrate the concept. So I'll just I'll stretch this out so that it covers you know that it covers my uh, uh, my periactoid face right there. And you can see that I'm facing uh, directly at my um, my original what were originally my red faces. So there's the seal projected onto that face. Now in order to um, to to do the same thing for the green and the blue um, I can take a couple of shortcuts. I know that I want a different slide. I also know that I want to use the same projection. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, use a new projection, but the same placement node. So I'll start off by taking this projection, uh, go to Edit, Duplicate, and I'll duplicate it with its shade, with its connections to the shading network. So that now uh, maintains its connection uh, to the 3D placement node. So it continues to use this. Uh, this placement node, but it also continues to use this slide. So what I'll do for the second step is I'll take the slide, uh, duplicate that with its connections to the network, and now I have another slide uh, that uses the same 2D placement node. I'll map this to the uh, the default of the um, of the blue. I'm sorry, the default of the uh, of the projection. I'll map the projection to the green here. And then I'll just swap out the slide. So in this case, I'll pick my skydiver slide. So now I've got two separate projections. Um, each one is controlled by the same 3D projection node. And I have two separate slides, but each one is controlled by the same uh, 2D projection node. So I'll do the same thing a third time. 
I'll take this projection. I'll uh, duplicate it with its connections to the network. That m keeps it connected to the um, uh, to the placement node. I'll take my slide here, uh, duplicate. Uh, with its connections to the network, that creates that third slide there. I'll map this to the to the uh, image here. I'll map this to the color, and I'll swap out the image and make that the waterfall. So now I have th my three separate shaders, which were originally um, assigned to three different faces of each um, of each one of my prisms. Each one now has its own projection. All three projections are controlled by the same 3D node. Each one has its own separate slide, but each slide is controlled by the same 2D projection node. So when I render this, I'll see my seal. Uh, if I um, rotate these 120 degrees, I should see my skydiver, and then if I rotate this to 140 degrees, I'll see my uh, waterfall. So the projections don't really show up that well um, in the hardware render, so I've gone ahead and rendered this. Uh, this is what the render looks like when this is rotated um, to whatever position it is that, that uh, the skydiver appears on. And when I play this, um, you can see that I've animated the Y rotation of each one of those uh, rect uh, triangular prisms. So it'll switch back and forth. Uh, I can scrub through this and you can see that, uh, that my image changes.